Hello everyone, this is a brief video concerning Devil May Cry 5 and microtransactions and I'm making this video in large part because there has been quite a bit of commotion surrounding the topic. That commotion I can sympathize with because I've also hold those reservations, but I think in this case a lot of those concerns are a bit overblown. I suppose I'll start off with my general opinions about microtransactions and DLC. I've never really bought DLC in my life and that's in part because I don't always have the money for that kind of stuff but also because a lot of DLC practices are kind of shady. I am mostly against DLC that is made of and conceived of before the game's release because it seems like you took the full game and then you just took a little slice off that game and put that up in a store. There's something icky about that but when it is made of and conceived of after the game is released, I'm, I'm completely fine with that because it's just more content that is added after the game and I don't think that that content should necessarily be free. I do think that they should try to make an effort to make it free, such as maybe additional skins or anything like that. That sort of stuff is fine, but I guess when it comes to something that is significantly difficult to make, such as extra levels, extra characters, moves, whatever, that sort of stuff, um, yeah, I think that people should pay for that. Um, that might be an issue when it comes to multiplayer games, and that's where the gray area for my views come in. But in general, just don't make DLC that should have been in the game in the first place. Though I think when it comes to microtransactions, most people are referring to the ability to buy in-game unlockable content, and I don't have any problem with that in principle, it's just that the track record behind these microtransactions in the gaming industry has been pretty bad, and the potential for abuse is always high. But I think if the game is developed without microtransactions in mind, without it infiltrating the development process, I think that's fine. It's just the issue comes when, one, it's a multiplayer game and so somebody who has a lot of money ends up having a huge advantage over the other players and two when the process of unlocking that unlockable content becomes unnecessarily difficult or grindy and the only real reason why they made it unnecessarily difficult and grindy is so that the player feels pressured to buy their microtransactions and that's pretty scummy this will almost inevitably make the game a lot less enjoyable and if you do buy the microtransactions and you skip out on unlocking the content and if a large part of the game is the journey and not the reward then you kind of defeat the purpose of the game now obviously this doesn't apply to every game since certain games are grindy at first but once you unlock the things that you want to unlock then the real fun begins but it still is pretty scummy as a business practice now where does DMC5 stand in all this? According to a few sources, Don't May Cry 5 will have microtransactions for the red orbs. If you don't know what the red orbs are, I don't know what you're doing in my channel first of all, but second of all, they're the game's currency. And you can buy a bunch of items as well as abilities with red orbs. Three years ago this happened with Don't May Cry 4 Special Edition, and that came out pretty fine. One of the reasons it came out pretty fine is that Don't May Cry 4 Special Edition was rebalanced so that you are able to get Red Orbs and Proud Souls a lot faster than you did in the original version of Don't May Cry 4. This goes to show that just because a game has microtransactions doesn't necessarily mean that it will be needlessly grindy and difficult. In this case it happened to be the exact opposite. I suspect that with Don't May Cry 5 it will be the same or a similar story. The thing about the Devil May Cry series in general is that it would take multiple playthroughs, multiple runs of the game in order to fully unlock your character's kit. Add to that additional content in the game such as super costumes and yes you will have to beat the game multiple times over in different difficulties to get everything. That was Devil May Cry 1 through 4 and even DMC Devil May Cry had this aspect to it. This means that the developers don't have to make the content needlessly grindy because your average consumer, casual, Joe Schmo, which b by the way I'm not I'm not making an attack on Angry Joe even though you know I kind of disagree on him in this subject, they will see this aspect of Devil May Cry as grindy even though for us people who have played the games, um, this is just your average Devil May Cry game which has a lot of unlockable content that will take a bit of time and a few playthroughs to fully unlock. The average consumer will want to buy the microtransactions, but you know, the regular Devil May Cry player probably won't. There are a lot of people who will have jobs, lives, you know, whatever, and they won't necessarily have a lot of time to put into Devil May Cry in order to unlock everything, but they still would want to experience a lot of the game's content, so this is for them as well as for somebody who really sucks, whether it is through their own fault, because they're lazy, or because maybe they have some sort of legitimate issue, and also for even good players who don't find the fun in Devil May Cry from unlocking stuff, rather from experimenting with its combat system, that is also for them. 
personally I'll just rather unlock stuff on my own and you know do, do the average Devil May Cry grind then you know then I can experiment how I want but you know preferences. So yeah in a nutshell I just don't think that Devil May Cry 5 will suffer from this problem. It might and if it does I hope uh, people will start talking about it and I do agree with Andy, Angry Joe to like you know keep 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 vigilant you know that's this this is the sort of stuff that people should stay on their guard and I could appreciate how people are overreacting to an extent because yeah you, this is something that you should keep an eye out for this is not something that should get a free pass in the industry if done wrong but I just don't think that Devil May Cry 5 will be that case but if it is much more grindy than your typical Devil May Cry game then yes I will have a problem with it but as far as this goes it, it, it seems fine I will also say that I share somewhat of a concern with these guys that the more frequent microtransactions become, even for things that are done right, the more likely it is that microtransactions will just take over a lot of games and then there will be more cases of people who are abusing that system. But I think that a lot of it is just in a case by case basis, but yes I could definitely understand that concern where, you know, it's a pretty slippery slope and I think that where we draw the line can be a little bit murky. In this case I think that the line still hasn't been crossed. Also, there's this paragraph in an article which quotes the developers about this stuff, and some people have been misusing this information, this, these quotes, and I, I, I'm going to read it first, and then I'm going to talk at some of the arguments being made about this. And I quote, It's interesting because from a game design point of view, there's two different things we think about when we set the prices of the moves, skills, and abilities, which can be purchased with red orbs, he explained. The first thing is the stuff we feel people should want to get first is made cheaper. So people will think, oh this is cheap, so I'm just going to buy this. But then for the stuff that's going to be hard to use the master, we make that more expensive. Partially because you save up for that, you're not going to be able to buy as many skills. So you're going to have the time to learn it. So you have to make the decision between going for the cheaper stuff or saving up, getting the thing that has a lot of application but you will have to spend time learning and perfecting. End quote. So as I said, a lot of people are using this as some sort of evidence to show that microtransactions are ruining the only cry, that they're kind of changing up the formula because of microtransactions. And I have no idea why people think that is, because this is exactly the same philosophy that they had for the previous Devil May Cry games. We don't even have to go that far back. We, we could just go to, I don't know, like... Devil May Cry 4 pre-special edition so that the argument about microtransactions is thrown out the window. So yeah, Devil May Cry 4, no microtransactions. There are certain techniques like enemy step which were insanely expensive and people might wonder like wait wait why like this is jumping off of an enemy why is that useful but you know people who are very familiar with the games will know that enemy steps allows you to cancel a bunch of attacks in the air and for crazy combos and stuff like that and you had other things more simple things like max act max act is the ability to if you're familiar with Nero you hit the enemy with an attack and if you press the charge button for your sword, the red button, at the right moment you get to fill a bar of meter, but with max act you get to fill all three bars with meter, but it takes timing and that that, that, that technique to buy was expensive. And so this is nothing new and, and, and in Devil May Cry when you're starting off you should think, well, do I want to buy the easy techniques first? So that way I have a feeling of progression and I always have something new to learn? Or do I want to save up for this powerful and difficult to master technique? That was kind of the philosophy in Devil May Cry 4 and you could see that all the way back to Devil May Cry 1. So yeah, if you think that this is somehow changing the formula of Devil May Cry in a big way, you haven't played a previous Devil May Cry game I think, or you haven't been paying much attention. And I don't know how you would need to pay much attention, it seems pretty obvious. I do however have an issue with the deluxe edition which is, I don't know how people can complain about the microtransactions but be rather silent most of them about the deluxe edition. You, you see there are four double breaker arms that are new that have completely new mechanics because obviously you've seen the, the Mega Man double breaker. That has a few new abilities that you won't be seeing in the game, you won't be unlocking. You have to buy the deluxe edition in order to get this. Like bonus music that you could buy, bonus costumes, you have an uh, extra skin for Dante's motorcycle, if that is a skin or if it's just like a, an actual other weapon which would even be worse. So that is actual in-game content that should have been in the game in the first place, but that now you're paying for separately. Um, yeah, where are the people complaining about that? I mean, I've, I've compl I complained about this the moment that I saw the trailer. I, in fact, you could go back in my video about me just random blabbering live stream about the trailer. Um, but nobody, I mean, I even complain about this. Uh, I complain about pre-order bonuses with Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition because of how 
Lady and Trish were different costumes, and um, Trish's costume was Gloria. Gloria's model is in the game. It's, it's actually in the game, but somehow you have to pay in order to have that costume. Um, I don't know, guys. But yeah, I felt the need to make this video because I've seen a lot of my followers and a lot of the people I follow talk about this sort of stuff, and I decided to keep up to date and uh, watch some of the videos that they've been showing around. I watched the Angry Joe video and the Jim Sterling video. At least with Angry Joe, I can sympathize a bit with him because, again, those points that he made... I agree with them, I just think that they're kind of misplaced in this area. I do again find it interesting that some of the people who are complaining about microtransactions aren't complaining about the deluxe edition, which is objectively worse, I think. And even he, at one point in the video, he clearly saw the four double arms being put behind a paywall for no reason. Didn't complain about that, huh? I mean, I guess his heart is in the right place. Jim Sterling, on the other hand, I don't fucking trust that. You know, it's kind of ironic coming from someone who at one point admitted that, you know, he fueled the fire when it came to the DMC Don't May Cry controversy. Him and his whole fucking lot of people. You know, that controversy and those people who added fuel to the fire, they did way more damage to Don't May Cry than these pesky little microtransactions have ever done. So, you know, take that as you will. I'm so fucking glad I didn't waste my time on his stupid Don't Make Cry, Don't Make Cry retrospective because that was... That was awful. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, <laughs> I like how my first DMC5 somewhat proper commentary is about this shit, but, you know, just felt the uh, random... Spite, spite is a good motivator sometimes, so, yeah. See ya.